For eight of the last nine years, the Ford Escort has been the world's best-selling car. Indeed, one in eight new cars sold in Britain is either an Escort or the booted version, the Orion. It's never been the most exciting car in the world, but it's always been well-priced, cheap to run, and blessed with a sort of robust quality. Bearing in mind the new car doesn't cost a penny piece more than the model it replaces, you may be expecting more of the same, but remember, the old car had two price rises just before it keeled over and died. Now, as far as styling's concerned, who can blame Ford for erring on the side of caution? Remember the wigging they got when they made the Sierra look like a woodlouse? This is a bit bland, but the divot down the side and the slightly flared wheel arches help liven up the profile to a certain extent. Sadly, they don't do the same for the rather anonymous front end. The Orion, on the other hand, which was designed at the same time as the Escort, as were the Cabriolet, the Estate and the Van, I think manages to look rather more like a classy saloon and rather less like an Escort towing a football pitch, an accusation that could certainly be levelled at its predecessor. The body's now 15% more aerodynamic than it was before. It's a little bit longer, it's a little bit wider, and that, of course, pays dividend in the boot, which is now 6% bigger than it was before. Reps will be rejoicing the length and breadth of the land. So as this car sits in the showroom, there's probably nothing that's going to frighten anyone away. And no one's going to be very frightened by what they find in here either. It all seems to be very well made. The dashboard's a model of common sense and clarity. Seats appear to be comfortable enough. And Ford are making a big noise about what they call a list of 40 new and important features. Actually, we've seen them all before. A rather more note, I think, is an extensive options list. You can have things like a compact disc player, power steering, air conditioning. In fact, it's entirely possible to turn a £9,500 hatchback like this one into a sort of £12,000 limousine. Ford would argue it's got limousine levels of space now. They've increased the wheelbase by five inches and the track by two and a half. That, they say, gives an extra inch of legroom and an extra three inches of shoulder room. They even say it's the most spacious car in its class, but I, I'm not so sure. Anyway, let's go and see what it's like to drive. Oddly enough, the worst part of the old car is the only bit that's been carried over to the new one. I'm talking about the engine. The range, as before, goes from 1.3 to an injected 1.6 and includes a diesel. The only difference being that you can now fit a catalytic converter on petrol models. Now, that may do wonders for the trees, but it doesn't half harm the performance. And if there's one thing this 1.4 can do without, it's something that slows it down. Not only isn't it very lively, but also it doesn't win any economy prizes either. But worse than all this is the noise. At low speeds, things aren't too bad, but take it toward the red line and you'll need ear defenders. We are talking loud. We are also talking vibrations. At high engine speeds, the gear lever, the pedals, well, everything really vibrates horribly. It'll be a year before a new range of 16 valve engines arrive, but until then, the choice is both limited and nasty. Never mind the engine, the worst part of the car, as far as I'm concerned, is this steering. It's not too heavy while you're parking, but there are 4.5 turns to go from lock to lock, and that means there's an immense amount of arm twirling. It would drive me mad. And it doesn't get any better when you're out of town, either. On a motorway, it all feels very woolly. You need to make endless corrections, even in a straight line. And when you're going through the bendy bits, you can't even expect fingertip lightness. Taking this car down a twisty road is like doing a workout in the gym. Only the car is noisier. The whole suspension system has been renewed, and there's no question that there have been some improvements. The ride, especially at low speed on bad surfaces, is much improved. And even at high speed, it doesn't float about too much. The price you pay is too much roll while cornering, even though Ford were forced to fit a front anti-roll bar to this model just weeks after it was launched. All in all, it's not much fun to drive. It's almost as though this car has been designed exclusively for British fleet managers. Now they buy a car like you or I buy a microwave oven. We're not bothered about whether the thing has character, just as so long as it cooks our food. They're not bothered about whether a car drives well or not. They just want it to be easy to buy, easy to run, and easy to sell. And that just about sums up this car's abilities, or more to the point, it sums up Ford's abilities. And make no mistake, it's not a bad car. Yes, it's got a horrible engine and the steering's a joke, but it moves about, it steers, it stops. The trouble is that there are loads of cars that move about and steer and stop, and most of them do an awful lot more besides. 
So to sum up, I didn't like the engine or the steering, and the position of some switches is a little difficult for shorter drivers. But to counter that, it's a more modern shape, there are some good options, and the boot's big. Overall, though, it's a disappointment.